Hey, what's up guys? Justin with Blackbeard's Radio, KQ4CIA. Uh, just coming to you, just want to do an update. Uh, I'm in my house right now. Um, I told you in the last video that I'd get around to uh, showing you what my go box was like and uh, what all I kept in it and how I organized it and cut it and trimmed it. And I'd also go over a more in-depth look at the equipment that I normally use for my pod activations and whenever I have to activate portable or mobile. Um, so we'll just get after it. I appreciate it. Pardon the camera shaking like normal. Everything's kind of live. My wife has a Pepsi addiction. I swear it's not me. All right. So first and foremost, we will start with my go box oh jesus apparently my hand too we'll start with my go box again my go box came from uh, harbor freight it is a archer i think is what they were called um it's just the largest pelican type case that they make that doesn't have wheels um got four clasps one on every side on the left and right and then two on the top uh, and then two places for locks you can tell that they're shiny and metal uh, reinforced the, cl the clasps were pretty pretty decent um, nothing great to write home about but they're not shabby uh, the lid comes with an insulation foam layer it's that cone stuff uh, and you see here i on one side i just have a hole but on the right side is where i keep my yesu 891 um it's cut to fit the 891 profile um my tuner knob and my volume knob and function key and underneath of that, I made a separate little cutout where I keep my hand switch and my hand mic. These are always kept right here. Um, sometimes, depending on where I'm going and what the weather's going to be like, I will bring my Heil uh, ProSet, ProSet 6 headset. Uh, I don't all the time do it. I activated today from uh, a pod up and my park was Kilo 6831. It's the battleship USS North Carolina. Um, and it was fairly windy and so I decided to stay in the truck. So I didn't even bring my headset. I just operated with the hand mic. Um, my home shack, has, I've always had a headset and I will always use a headset more nine times out of 10. Um, I definitely like the headset being able to type hands-free. Um, and this with the hand mic or with the hand trigger, I honestly, I hate to do it, but I hold it and I activate it with my middle finger and I peck. Cause normally, you know, you're only typing calls in, which are what, at most five digits. And then occasionally you'll have to, you know, a, a stroke, you know, AT2 or stroke mobile something. Um, and then in the comment section, you might have to enter a comment or a part for a part to park. Um, so it still uh, enables me to pretty much stay on the keyboard, even with one finger. Um, I also carry a separate keyboard, but even one finger, I can typically peck away pretty good. On the left hand side, you can tell again, I have a top layer cutout. Um, this is where my one of my MFJ 939 tuners goes. Depending on the antennas that I'm using, uh, my half wave end fed from 10 Tenna does not need a tuner at all. It's resonant on uh, 40 and 20. Uh, SWR on, on both of those is below 1.2, uh, all over both frequencies from top to bottom in both bands. So I don't even worry about bringing a tuner to POTA activations, which is why you can tell today it was wide open. But under the tuner, I keep my power cables. I do like my Anderson power poles, as you can tell. Um, so, Yesu adapter, power poles, my fuses, and this is just a long jumper box. 
our jumper line. This one's about 10 feet long. Um, here's some alligator clips. So in the event that my battery starts to run dead, um, I have a secondary option. I can lift my hood up with my truck, connect to the battery in my truck and run it straight through the door. Um, and that way I don't have to hardwire anything into my truck. Uh, I'm not great at keeping vehicles for a long time. So uh, planning on putting a wire through a firewall isn't really there. Uh, but as you can tell, my 891, the only thing I've done really to it is my Cat 5 extender. This is a 12 inch extender. It's Cat 6. And then that way I don't have to take the faceplate off every time I switch between the hand mic and the uh, headset. Um, I, it's just there. So I can just plug it in here. I never have to pull the faceplate off. And anybody that has had to pull the faceplate off of an 891 understands that that can be a pain in the butt. Um, they come on and off very well, but once you put the cord in there um, and coming out of that little hole on the side, things get pretty tight. Uh, so it's not the most comfortable thing. But what I did to cut my foam, this foam is in two layers. Uh, so one's completely removable. What I did was I, I pulled the first layer out and I decided that, you know, before I could do anything, I needed to get my radio and tuner out so I could start those. Um, after I already ran my wire in a tree or set up my mast, you know, whatever I'm doing, um, the next step was going to be putting a, putting a transceiver on the table. So I wanted my tuner and radio in the top layer. I just, this, these insulations, and I don't know how well you can see, I'll try and zoom in. Um, you can kind of see, like right here, if I pull it apart a little bit, they're in squares. So the squares are about half inch, one half inch by one half inch. So I just set up my, I just set my radio and tuner on top of this mat when it was full and I lined it up with the outside and I figured I wanted at least an inch, inch and a half all the way around everything. And that way I had good cushion in between. Um, but then I tried to line everything up on the, on the seam. Cause these little nubbins, you can see them kind of separating there. They're attached in three or four spots in between them all. And, um, once you do that, you're fine. And, and I just outlined with a Sharpie. I cut it out with a snap, a snap blade knife, you know, a razor knife that's got the extendable razor blade. Um, and then I just kind of slowly trimmed each line that I did. Uh, and that way I could get a tight, proper fit. Um, and everything stays pretty secure. I hadn't had anything move around, wiggle or shake too much. And then I did the same thing for my second layer. I just kind of looked at all my accessories that I wanted to carry. And I knew that I needed a place to store some cables. And then I needed a place for my hand mic and stuff. So depending on where I'm going, if I don't take my tuner and I know I'm going to use my headset, this is where I throw my, my Heil headset. I also have a cheap um, Skull Candy headset that doesn't have a microphone. Um, that I take with me all the time. It stays in my book bag, um, but that stays with me all the time, just in case uh, I'm having a, I'm in a high noise environment of ambient noise, not radio noise. So I can put on the headphones and get a little bit better sound quality. Um, the other thing that goes with this is obviously my radio, my my battery. wherever it lit. I'm sorry. My battery, it's the Wise Life Pro, Life Pro 4, 12.8 uh, volt at eight, 18 amp hours. Um, I can tell you I've ran this battery for about six and a half hours sitting still in my shack when I was testing it. Um, just kind of Q-sewing, didn't do any nets, didn't do any I had zero meetings or schedules I needed to be on, but just kind of QSO and listen and DX them a little bit. And this battery lasted me forever. Um, in the field, I've only burned it to the ground once and killed it. And it was about three and a half hours. 
and I made over 170 contacts that day. Um, so I was transmitting a lot. Um, on top of it, I have a charge controller that has a blinking green light. So I know if I'm getting to the, I need to stop part. part. Um, the one of the reasons I picked this battery is this is a cheaper battery. It's not a, one of the bio batteries. It's, but it does have onboard balancing built into the top cap. Um, and it also has voltage regulators built in. So you can't actually kill the battery. Uh, and that way it's not rechargeable. The life cycle of this battery is two to 3,000 charges. Um, and with a lithium phosphate battery, that is not any time you connect the battery, that is two to 3,000, 100% charges. So if you charge this battery from 50% to full, uh, that is only 50% of one time. Um, so I've been very happy with it. Of course, on top of that, I have a couple ring, I mean, a couple Anderson blocks uh, tied in with ring terminals just for accessories, um, my radio for certain. And then, uh, you know, one day maybe I'll end up making a little 12 volt adapter for to charge my iPad or iPhone or something. Other than that, I do all of my logging with, and uh, when I'm in the field with my iPad, don't ask me what kind of iPad it is. I don't know. Um, I break iPads and my wife buys me a new one. That's kind of how it goes. Let me see if I can turn this down so you can see the screen any better. Try to zoom in. So there's my latest activations. This is the one from this morning. Um, and I use the Hammer software, H-A-M-R-S. Um, it's just a great all around logging software for a mobile application. Um, I really like it because it has a POTA template and you can see on the right hand side, um, you know, it's got my frequency that I locked in on, how much power I'm running, band, your mode you're on, what your call sign is, if you're running any club calls, uh, your state, your grid, and then you, you enter your part and your part stays entered throughout. Um, so it automatically lets you log everything with the ADIF file that is POTA compliant and automatically uploads into the POTA site. Uh, so this morning I had 129 contacts. And one of the cool things is it has POTA spotting. So it automatically uploads under the POTA template all of the current activations. So all of these highlighted blue are current activations that are happening right now at the time of this video. Uh, and you can narrow this down with the filters, you know, what modes, what bands. Uh, and then the other cool thing is that's just a neat trick is uh, it's got a map and a lot of your logging software these days has maps. Uh, this morning I made contact in Ecuador, some Europe, so I had a couple in Spain and then one way over here. Uh, and I think he was on the edge of Poland if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that, I can't remember. But then you can see my arch, you know, a really odd contact. It was also in North Carolina. Pretty weird that I had that guy that close, but he was there. Um, so it, it's neat, it keeps everything tracked. You can delete it as you want to. The second I get, I'm done and I, and I close down my pod and I go QRT and I shut off my radio, before I turn off my Wi-Fi hotspot, um, I email my activation to myself. And all you have to do is hit the little wrench, export ADI file, and then I email it to myself. Um, but that's it. And the, if you start a new one and you do a new log book, you just title it. It's got a generic log, which is just their call sign, your call sign, your signal report, and any comments. It also has parts on the air, summits on the air, field day, and winter field day. So there's a bunch of options in this software. And like I said, I absolutely love it for mobile applications. Um, I pair that with a cheap keyboard that is a Bluetooth keyboard. There's absolutely nothing fancy about it. Um, it was like 15 bucks from Target, Walmart, Amazon, I don't know, uh, wherever the cheapest 
Bluetooth keyboard was. The next thing I have is my electrical cord wrap. And on this wrap, I keep 25 feet of cheap throwaway coax in case I have a questionable area. Um, I also have some nicer RG174 and this 174 with my NFED halfway, NFED halfway actually gave me the best results for my SWR according to my antenna analyzer. Um, I have 50 feet of it. I stretch 50 feet of it out on the ground. Not as a counterpoise, but almost, you know, the shielding of your coax acts, of, acts as the other half of your half wave. So, um, but it works wonderfully. And I, when I'm using my 1010 half wave in fed, I consistently am under a 2.25 SWR. Um, and for a quick and light kit, I wouldn't trade it. I'll take that. The other thing I have is my nano cord, um, and this is just all this bright green or yellow wire and a little S clip to connect my antenna insulator to. Um, but this is what I throw into a tree or slingshot into a tree. There's the fishing weight that I showed you in my last video. Uh, truly, I hit it with a chisel a bunch until I popped off enough weight that I could throw it comfortably. Um, if I can't throw it comfortably, I have a slingshot. There's nothing fancy about this slingshot. I got it from Harbor Freight. It was like five or six bucks. Um, absolutely works. Not great, not horrible, but it works. Uh, I'm not great with the slingshot. There's, I, I, I saw a guy uh, last weekend or the weekend before using half of a fishing pole and he would cast his little weight he had a like a, a clasp on the and a weight and he would cast the weight over he would hook his antenna up and then he would reel in the antenna to where he needed it and that was a great so i'm going to look at doing that too and then my antenna um, again it's a half wave in fed 20 gauge speaker wire it's about 65 feet three inches or so uh, as you can tell i truly just cut a cutting board up so I could have little insulators and connection points. Uh, and this is what I use to pull it with. I have one that I can, a ring that I worked a little more on. Uh, but this one lets me rig it as a uh, dipole, or not as a dipole, excuse me, as an inverted V. And that way I can just kind of put this in the middle, go ahead and stake out the ends a little bit and just raise the middle of it up and then have an inverted V. Uh, but I have absolutely loved this antenna and my setup so far. And again, there's the inside of my box. Nothing fancy. Um, I don't have any high dollar components in here. Uh, but it all works and it works pretty well for me. Um, of course, you know, <laughs> your results may vary. But I told you I, I told you I'd get to it and go through it with you. In my next activation, hopefully I won't be rushed for time and I will, oh, my foot's asleep, but I will go through how I actually set up and I'll do the whole process with you and I will film it. Um, and that way I can show you step-by-step step what I'm doing and uh, hopefully I'm doing okay. And if y'all have anything that y'all see that I could do better, um, just let me know. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Justin. KQ4CIA uh, with Blackbeard's Radio. I hope you found this somewhat in informative, and if not informative, uh, at least entertaining so you can laugh at me because I'm okay. I, I make a lot of mistakes and I'm learning. Uh, I appreciate you following me through my journey, and I hope you have a great day.